We're gonna pump a self-leveling underlayment into our test area here. So in order to get the pump prepared, there's a number of things we've done. We do have other videos that go through that step-by-step, -step, how to adjust the water ratio for your given material, how to adjust the pressure on the rotor stator, and how to prime the hose. So we've already pressure tested to 300 PSI, which is our normal testing pressure. And we've pumped water into the hose and we've checked the water ratio for our given material. Typically, as you're pumping through the day, this hopper area here stays full with dry material. If you do let it get down to where you can see the auger, now you're putting in the same amount of water per minute, yet you're taking less material. That's gonna give you a watery mud out of your hose. In the self-leveling cements, a watery material will look great on the floor, but it'll be a weak mix. It has to have the proper water ratio. That said, uh, you don't want a water ratio that's low either because then the product will not self-level properly. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, we've set this to the prescribed amount for this particular material, which is two and a half gallons a minute. Now, in our other videos, we show you how to adjust that for the given material. There is a formula that you use based on the quarts per bag to determine the water setting on the pump at full speed. Uh, typically, it's a piece of plexiglass that has measurements on it or, or just a clear piece of plexiglass. A two inch piece of pipe, four inches long, that you set on the plastic. You fill it up with your mud from your nozzle end because that's the product that you're placing on the floor. You fill it up and then you pick it up and then in a given amount of time you measure the patty. Typically it's 9 to 11 inches on most products but you have to look at the instructions on your bag and through the training from your material supplier uh, what your patty size should be. If it is that patty size coming out of the nozzle the material will perform properly as designed on the floor. First thing I'm going to do is turn the machine on. It's already putting the prescribed amount of water for the rate that we're pumping. And I'm gonna just simply trickle a bag in to help slick the hose. The hose has water in it. The material will push the water out. And then once that bag that I trickled in there is gone, then I'll fill up the hopper and then that's where we'll run for the rest of the day. As I said before, provided you keep the hopper full and the water at the same setting, you'll have consistent mud all day long. Before we start mixing, we want a means to get rid of the dust that is created by dropping the bags. You can either take a HEPA shop vac, duct tape it here in the corner and that'll usually take care of it. Uh, here at the shop, we actually have a large HEPA vacuum that we utilize. And typically it'll be right next to the pump. So you'll want a means to eradicate the dust because this does create dust. We also wear respirators. If you utilize a shop vac in the corner or some type of means of extricating the dust, it will make you OSHA compliant as far as dust. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a filter on the end. We call it a sock. Okay, now we have good material coming out of the end. And we're going to simply start pouring. As you can see, the mud comes out very consistently. And it'll come out in this fashion all day long. Provided you keep the hopper full of material. Now normally I'd do a slump test right now just to make sure I have the proper slump. But as you can see, this is much faster than mixing by hand and dumping it out in barrels. This pump is 100 bags an hour. The next one up is 200 bags an hour. The two-piece component is 300 bags an hour. Very easy to maintain a wet edge. 
So we finished our pour for the day. Now we're simply pumping the excess material out. So at this point, uh, many times you'll gauge rake it to get a uniform thickness. And then some of the manufacturers either utilize a porcupine roller or a smoother, which is just a flat trowel on a stick that lays it down. Um, one thing you want to remember whenever you're using a gauge rake is you always want to keep this angle the same. If you go this way or this way, it changes the thickness of the floor. So you want to always keep it the same angle to get the proper depth. 